Mark 85 out in Michigan this week visiting family. But right now I am heading down to Hillsdale, Michigan, and that is the home of Marvo Minerals, and they are the company that produces Lucky Buck that you've seen Eric and I use so many times up at the cabin. We love the product, uh, have been using it for years. I contacted a rep at Lucky Buck and asked if I could come and visit the plant. They graciously accepted, so I am headed down there. So we shall see the plant, the facility, etc., and what they are doing there, maybe learn a little bit more about it. I thought maybe you'd like to see what's going on there also. You folks that use Lucky Buck and maybe some of the people that are interested in the product have heard about it. So come on along. My name is Dave Wheeler, and I'm the developer of the Lucky Buck Deer Mineral. I'd like to tell you a little bit about our story of how we started and some of the results that we've gotten. So I, my background is dairy nutrition, and I bought a mineral company that catered to small dairy farms in the mid 90s and at the time they were going out of business and evolving to the mega farms and I knew that was going to be a trend for the next 20 years so I wanted to diversify so I developed a mineral at the time deer cocaine was really popular in the late 90s and I thought I could do something better than that with my nutrition background so I made a mineral up mostly as an attractant but the, I knew it would be healthy for the deer. Little did I know that a healthier deer would grow a dramatically larger antler. We discovered that as we started getting more results from it. So the first one that we noticed that really made an impact and is still making an impact today on the, on the company is this giant eight point. That's the one we feature on our bucket here. It's the one that really got us notoriety and got us established as a legitimate mineral company. This buck was just a tremendous specimen of the whitetail deer. He was only four years old when he was killed here in southern Michigan, Hillsdale County, but he scored 185 inches as a clean eight point. So he's the biggest clean eight point ever entered in Boone and Crockett. At the time he was killed, he also had the longest main beams in Boone and Crockett history. He has 32 and a half inch main beams on both sides. This rack, also you can see the mass, this rack weighed over 13 pounds. The buck itself, field dressed at 195, but 13 pounds of that was antler. To add to this story, two of the local farmers had found his sheds. So starting in the spring of 99, Lucky Buck Mineral was fed. One set of shed antlers was found of this buck as a two-year-old, he went 148 inches. That would have been his first year on Lucky Buck. As a three-year-old, he went 169 and then 185 when he was killed. So this is what really got people interested in looking into it. We do a lot of things that nobody else had done in the past. We have a high salt content. We have no phosphorus. We do a lot that most of the experts disagree with. From my dairy background, I knew I needed to control intake and I needed to get the deer to consume it on a consistent basis. I knew that several of the trace minerals were critical, especially selenium. Selenium's the one secret that I freely share. Selenium is extremely important in our livestock and it's equally or more important in the white-tailed deer that aren't getting any selenium in the wild in most of the country. So we've loaded up with selenium, but we needed a control method to keep it from eating too much because selenium is toxic if they get too much. By using a high salt level, we can control their intake, get them to eat it, and keep them from eating too much of it. That's one of the reasons why this has been so successful is because we came about this from a totally different aspect. We didn't read all the leading deer biologists and we didn't study and we didn't do it the same way everybody else had done it in the past. Fortunately, this eight point was killed. Otherwise, people may not have taken us seriously and we may have just continued to be an attractant that attracted the deer in really well. We've got a strong apple flavor. The deer love it. They come to it, it's great to bait your trail cameras, it's great to hunt over if it's legal where you are. But overall, we're looking for actual antler growth. That's our, that's our uh, main claim to fame. 
So I'd like to show you a few of the other examples of the outstanding deer over the last 20 years. And you may say, these aren't typical deer, and they're not. These are all mistakes. Every one of the deer that I'm gonna show you would have been killed the year before if somebody had a chance, but they didn't, they got through another year. My main objective is to produce a deer that's worth hanging on your wall when it's two and a half years old, for example. That's when most of my customers are gonna be happy, especially here in Michigan. Maybe you have the luxury of hunting in a state where you get four and five year old deer, but in Michigan, we don't. Or Michigan, Pennsylvania, there's a lot of states that have real aggressive hunting and very little aging. So if I can get your two and a half year old deer to be big enough to hang on your wall, that's my main objective. If he gets past you or you let him go and he gets to be three and a half or four and a half, then you have the potential for these mistakes, as I call them. So I'll tell you a little bit about some of these other deer. So the, the big eight point was killed in 01, and our next notable deer was killed a couple of years later, also in Hillsdale County, also locally, was this deer here. This is the state record for archery for Michigan at 225 inches. Still holds the record. 15 years later or whatever it is. This buck scores 225, and he's 35 inches bigger than anything ever killed in Hillsdale County before. Like I said, it's the state record for Michigan for archery. He was on Lucky Buck for two years. He was killed behind one of the big dairy farms locally here, where four of the employees of the farm were putting the mineral out in the woodlot right behind the bar. Tremendous deer, 21 points, huge mass. He actually broke off an opposing point to this, which would likely have given him another 10 or 11 inches, and a fairly typical rack with a tremendous main beam. This buck made the front page of North American Whitetail. Another buck made the front page of North American Whitetail, and that's this one right here. This is the youth state record for Michigan, killed in 04. Scores in the mid 190s, probably has the most impressive brow tines I've ever seen on a white tail. Killed by a 16 year old kid with a bow during regular season, not a youth hunt or anything else. He'd been feeding Lucky Buck for two years. If you have a small property and you think you can't manage deer, granted it's more difficult, but this is a prime example that you still can have an impact. This was killed on 10 acres. The house is in the middle of those 10 acres. This buck was featured in North American Whitetail, front page, spring of 06. They call him the Amish Lucky Buck. The reason they call him that is because he was eating Lucky Buck the entire year before he was shot. Scores 305 inches. At the time he was killed, he was the fifth biggest Whitetail of all time in Boone and Crockett. Not only is he 36 scoreable points, 305 inches, he's actually got some symmetry and beauty to him as well. This buck actually has true main beams, but you can see G1, G2, 3G, G4, G5 from straight behind. So as you can see, his tines line up just like a pickup fence. I don't think there's ever been a white tail kill that you can see the G1s through the G5s on both sides from straight behind them. This buck would actually beat Hanson as a typical if you knocked off 85 inches of junk on him. He nets over 220 typical. We have a tremendous following in the Amish community with the lucky buck. This is not a small part of why that has happened. All of these bucks have been wild, free-ranging deer. This buck was on it his entire life. He was fed for, they were feeding Lucky Buck for eight years on this property. The interesting part of this buck's story is that the shed racks were found on this particular buck, so we know how big he was the year before. This buck scores about 267 inches, as he is now. The year before, he was 171 inches. This is him the year before. We can't prove that Lucky Buck made all the difference, but we think it had a significant part in it. This buck scores 218 inches. He was on Lucky Buck his entire life. The guys that killed him had been feeding for seven or eight years on that property. Killed some tremendous deer, including 185 inch 10 point the year before. 
At 218, he's the biggest one that they've killed. This one has an interesting unicorn point coming right out of his forehead that's 13 inches long. This is one of the more unique deer, and this one I have in my collection more for the uniqueness than anything else. It has a 12 inch spread and scores 197 inches. This buck was killed in north central Ohio, scores 250, or right, right around 250, and was unlucky buck his entire life. We still, we run a one bucket at a time for production, but we can run three to 4,000 buckets a day if we need to. So if you like mass, this set of sheds would appeal to you. This, these sheds were found in eastern Wisconsin in a place where they were feeding Lucky Buck for multiple years. Normally I don't talk too much about high fence deer. I don't necessarily advocate for or against farm raised deer, but it's a whole different subject than wild free ranging deer. Our main marketing with Lucky Buck is for wild free ranging deer. That's where we excel, that's where we control the intake in the wild as they're free choicing on it, whereas a pen situation you can force feed and you can manipulate a lot more. This shed comes off of a buck that they called Meathead. He's a half brother to the famous Goliath buck, one of the first bucks to score 400 inches in a pen. Because he was a half brother, they kept him around to see if he would develop. He never did. This is his good side at nine years old. My customer, who was feeding Lucky Buck to his pen of deer, decided to see what he could do with this deer, bought him, moved him, and put him on Lucky Buck. You would think going from nine to 10 and moving would set him back a little bit. This is the same side the next year as a 10 year old. This is more pound of bone than he ever had on his head, even in his prime and it's when he's 10 years old. So the other example I wanted to give you of a, of a high fence situation that we, is kind of notable for Lucky Buck. The taxidermist that actually did the first replica rack on this eight point for me. I brought the, I brought the original to him to make a replica and I said we wanted to promote Lucky Buck with it. And he was extremely skeptical. He, did not think that Lucky Buck made this deer. He thought it was genetics or just a freak of nature, but he didn't give Lucky Buck much credit. However, he had a couple of deer in a pen. He decided to try feeding them Lucky Buck. This is Jake, his pet deer, as a three-year-old in 2001. This is him the next year as a four-year-old, about what you'd expect, just a little heavier, but about what you expect from a three to a four. So he started dumping Lucky Buck in on top of the deer chow pellets that he'd been feeding. And I didn't think it would make a difference substantially because those deer pellets should have everything they need. They should already have selenium. I know I can make an improvement on a wild deer, but I didn't know if you could actually see the difference when you were actually feeding a complete feed. This is the next year on Lucky Buck. He more than doubled his mass, and the only thing the guy changed was adding Lucky Buck to the grain diet. There was a buck killed in Cannon Falls, Minnesota several years ago. That's a clean eight point that's bigger than this one. It was actually killed illegal. It was killed with a rifle after dark out of season, but that eight point Scores in the mid 190s. This one's 185. It has 32 and a half inch beams and very similar mass to this. They estimated him to be eight years old. That buck was on Lucky Buck as well for four years. Two other guys had found the sheds on that deer as a six year old and a seven year old. He was a nine point. He went back to an eight when he was killed illegally. They figured he was eight years old, but he was still getting bigger as an eight year old than he was at seven and six, even with one less time. So the two biggest clean eight points of all time, this one and the one that's even bigger, were killed five states apart, eight years apart, and they had one thing in common.
They both are on Lucky Buck. To me, that's probably the most convincing evidence of what Lucky Buck is capable of doing when 70% or more of all whitetails are destined to be eight points and two of the biggest ones of all time were killed after using it for three or four years. So this is the actual original rack and body mount of the world record eight point. Most of the mounts that we use and take to shows are replica racks and because of security and because of the value of them, it's much easier to transport and take around the replica racks. They are actual size, but just for your own benefit, this is the original uh, rack of the world record eight point. I'd like to tell you a little bit about how to apply or what my recommendations are for feeding Lucky Buck. Our biggest emphasis is for antler growth and that needs to happen in the spring. The spring is the critical time to get Lucky Buck out. So I have a chart that I've put together that kind of shows the usage of Lucky Buck naturally when they're going to eat it and about how much they're going to eat and how that correlates with the antler growth cycle. So the program I'd like you to follow is when you're out shed hunting in the early spring I'd like you to dump a third of a bucket out to start a new site or freshen up an existing site. At green up in the spring is the critical bucket. When you start mowing your lawn for the first time, dump a bucket out. In fact, put a bucket on the seat of your lawn mower and don't mow your lawn the first time in the spring until you dump that bucket out. Those deer are eating dry browse and grass prior to green up. At green up, they're eating nothing but new growth grass. New grass is almost 90% water, so that makes their entire diet almost 90% water. Essentially flushes the electrolytes right out of their system. So they crave the sodium in Lucky Buck, and by accident, they get the selenium and stuff that improves the antler growth right when they really need it. You can expect, if you've got 20 to 25 deer hitting your site, you can expect about a bucket a month, about 20 pounds a month for the next four months or so. The end of July, the antlers are done growing pretty much. The does are pretty well weaned the fawns off and they're gonna back off on their intake, mostly because their diet's drying back down and they're not gonna need the electrolytes that they did in the early spring. They're gonna back off and a third of a bucket every other month in front of your trail camera to maintain your, maintain your site is your year cycle. So five or six buckets per site based on about 25 deer hitting the site, will be what you'll use for the entire year. So I'd like to thank you for listening and, and hope you got something out of this. I hope you try Lucky Buck if you haven't already or if you have been and haven't been utilizing it in the spring and actually going for antler growth and just using it as an attractant. I hope you consider using it in the spring and get some great results and get some bigger white tail, bigger healthier white tail. So I want to thank uh, all the guys from Lucky Buck, uh, Dave, Mario, Abe, uh, all the folks that I met, really nice uh, group of guys, absolutely fantastic deer. I hope you enjoyed it, I hope you learned a few things, and like I said when I first started the video, I'm an avid believer in it, and if not, I'm more than I was before. Uh, after visiting the plant and uh, listening to Dave talk about some of the deer that they had there. Absolutely fantastic. So this is Whitebrook 85 out at the Lucky Buck plant. I'll catch you next time.